All right, we're continuing our derivation of the D5D character table. And so far we figured out gamma one, because it's a totally symmetric representations, ones across the board, figured out gamma two by um, seeing that it transformed as Z. And then we found that X and Y transformed together as gamma three. We had some cosines in there because of those 72 degree rotations. Um, and so at this point, we're gonna do quadratic functions. And actually the first one that we're going to do is an incredibly easy one. It's just uh, X, Z, Y, Z. And why do I know that those functions transform together? Well, because I know X and Y transform together um, and Z doesn't. So if I multiply Z times X and Y, I'm gonna get X, Z, and Y, Z uh, transforming together. And uh, the reason why this one's really nice to do next is because we can literally just multiply gamma two and gamma three, and we're gonna get uh, two times one, uh, two cosine two pi over five, two cosine four pi over five, right? Because the ones are here, and we have negative ones here. So these switch signs and a negative one there, so switch a sign and then a zero. Um, and so uh, there it is. And so that one's incredibly easy, but we're kind of stuck at this point, you know, we're, we can't re really do any more. Um, so now we can move on to gamma five and think about some other functions. We can think about z squared. Um, z squared doesn't really help us too much. Z squared, right? If you square this, you're just gonna get gamma one, right? Because all these negative ones are gonna turn to one. But what about um, x, y, right? That's our other d orbital function. And I know the answer here, and I know that uh, x, y actually transforms <clears throat> together with x squared minus y squared. But I'll show you um, why we know that um, right now. So uh, <clears throat> let's go through and, and do that. Just trying to find a place to put me. Let's see, right there is good. All right, so, um, okay. Well, we start off with identity. That's not very interesting. X, Y goes to X, Y. And then we're gonna try, we're testing how X, Y transforms in all these cases. How does um, X, Y transform with, when we do a C5, right? That's that's a, a symmetry element in the two C5 class. We could do C5 or we could do C5-4. Those are two symmetry elements. Well, recall that we use the uh, rotation um, matrix to tell us how these transform. So if we do a C5, we have X, Y times a two by two rotation matrix, cosine two pi over five, minus sine two pi over five, and then sine two pi over five and cosine two pi over five. So what that means um, is that X goes to um, cosine two pi over five X minus sine two pi over five Y. So that's X but then we're doing X, Y, so we have to do Y. So X times Y, Y goes to sine two pi over five X plus cosine two pi over five Y. And so now we have a FOIL situation and we have to multiply these things out. So our first term is cosine and sine, X squared term cosine two pi over five times sine two pi over five x squared. Um, and then we have a y squared term, which looks very similar. And in fact, uh, it's just gonna be a negative, but it's again has a cosine two pi over five times sine two pi over five. So I'm actually gonna factor out x squared minus y squared there, right? Cause we got a y squared, y squared. And then we have the x, y term, the cross terms. We have a, a minus sine squared term for x, y. Um, and then we have a plus cosine squared term. So we actually have, uh, um, if we factor that out, it's gonna be cosine squared two pi over five minus sine squared two pi over five 
um, times x, y. And so we can see here, so I told you earlier that x and y, uh, x, y, and x squared minus y squared transform together. So um, really when we go to, and what, what I mean by that is, you know, we could not describe how x, y transformed with, with the C5 operation without, well, only we could do that with also invoking x squared minus y squared. So it's a linear combination of x squared minus y squared and x, y. Um, <clears throat> and so what that tells us uh, that we have to do is um, when we talk about any of these symmetry operations, uh, we have to invoke both of these two quadratic functions, of course, together. So we're going to be talking about two by two matrices. And for identity, right, that is going to be the identity matrix one plus one, which is why we're going to have a two here for gamma five. Now we're hoping we're going to get something different than um, what we got for x and y and x z. Y, Z, gamma three and gamma four, um, but we don't know that at this point. Okay, um, and so uh, if we want, we can actually simplify this a bit. There is a trigonometric relationship um, that you might remember from your algebra two days, which is that uh, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine two theta. So taking advantage of this, uh, we can just write this out a little bit simpler. Um, this first term I'm gonna be leaving alone, but the second term is gonna be cosine four pi over five x, y. And that's going to be the key term because that's going to be the on diagonal term for x, y, right? So if you imagine a matrix, we're going to have a cosine 4 pi or 5 there. But we have to figure out x squared minus y squared. And so um, we have to square what x is. So let's go ahead and square that. This is x, right? This whole thing was x, y. Um, so we have to square this. So let's go ahead and square that. We're going to get... Um, uh, cosine squared 2 pi over 5 x squared. Um, and then we're going to have um, a, a, a minus there. Uh, and so minus sine 2 pi over 5, that gets us a plus sine squared 2 pi over 5 um, y squared. Okay, and so those are the, the x squared terms and the y squared terms, and then we have the uh, x, y terms, the cross terms. There are gonna be two of them that are the same. So that's gonna be negative two cosine two pi over five, um, sine two pi over five x, y. So that's x squared. Now I have to do the same thing for y squared. So this is y, and remember that there's a minus sign here. We're doing minus y squared. So let's square this. Um, and so we're gonna have our minus sine squared two pi over five x squared. Again, remembering our minus sign. Um, we're gonna square this term minus cosine squared. Oh, I'm running into myself here. So I'm just gonna put a line there. 2 pi over 5 um, y squared. Okay, and then we have what? We have the cross terms again. So it's this thing squared. Uh, and so remember again, it's minus, and this is going to be minus 2. Um, there's two of them 2 cosine 2 pi over 5 sine 2 pi over 5 xy. That's actually the same term that we got here. So those are gonna go away. Um, so these x, y terms, um, they actually don't quite go away. Sorry about that. They're gonna be uh, equal to negative four, uh, which is fine. This is an off diagonal term of our matrix. The on diagonal term, right, is where what x squared minus y squared transformed to a linear combination of itself. Um, This is a common motif if you watch my other uh, 
other character table der derivations with uh, n equals five principal rotation axis. You get this, this same sort of term. A lot of this math ends up being the same as some of those previous videos. Um, but anyway, what we can do is we can factor out a uh, cosine squared two pi over five x squared minus y squared and a minus sine squared of the same thing. Um, and so what that basically means is that um, it's a long way of saying, just make sure this is right. So that factors out like that. So um, here's the minus part of that, right? And then this was a positive y squared, right? Right here, okay? And again, you have this cosine squared two pi over five minus the sine squared two pi over five. So in other words, that's gonna turn in, this first term stays the same. Just gonna copy that over. But this term ends up being a plus, right? We can sub that in cosine two pi theta. So not cosine two pi over five, but now four pi over five x squared minus y squared. And so if we look at this, um, the key terms that, you know, we go from x squared minus y squared to something times itself. So we're, we're done with all the factoring now. That's the on diagonal portion of the matrix and x, y times something by itself is this, right? So um, those are gonna be our coefficients. So in the end, we're gonna get a matrix that looks like x, y, and x squared minus y squared um, going to you know, what this operation does. The matrix is, I don't even have to write this part out. I don't really care about it, right? Because I can just care about the trace of the matrix. Is gonna be cosine four pi over five and cosine four pi over five on that main diagonal. And so what that tells me is that the trace of the matrix is just gonna be cosine four pi over five plus cosine four pi over five. And so our character is gonna therefore simply be two cosine uh, four pi over five. So a lot of math to get here, but we got it. And so down here, uh, we put two cosine um, four pi over five. And that is actually unique compared to uh, gamma three and gamma four, where we had um, under this class, the two C5 class, the character in both cases with two cosine two pi over five. So we got something unique, um, which is great. And so <clears throat> at this point, what do we do? Well, we need to do the same sort of math, but now not for um, C5 operation, but for C5-2, okay? Fortunately, um, we don't have to redo all this work because we know that the rotation matrix now, instead of having two pi's over fives here, it's gonna have four pi's over fives here. So all this math is gonna be um, the same, right? But instead of having uh, four pi over five here, we had, that came from the cosine two theta relationship applied to a two pi over five. Now we're gonna apply the two theta, cosine two theta relationship to a four pi over five. So our end answer is gonna be that our chi of, um, of C5 two is gonna be equal to two cosine eight pi over five. Okay, um, and where did that come from? Again, cosine two theta operation being applied to now a double of what we started with before, so four pi over five, so now eight pi over, uh, over five. Okay, well, it turns out there's a very nice unit circle relationship, which basically tells you that cosine eight pi over five is the same thing as cosine two pi over five. You plug that into your calculator, you'll see that those two values are the same. And so our final answer we can express 
in terms of two cosine two pi over five. So you kind of see these patterns here where you know we just swapped these values in gamma five. Kind of expecting therefore, if we're continuing with the pattern, this to be a zero. Let's see if that's true. We're doing a C2 here. Remember we defined our C2 as being perpendicular to the X axis. And so what did that do? That took X um, and go, went into X, right? An X vector didn't change if, we're, if it's coincident with that rotation, but it took a Y and it flipped it to negative Y. So X, Y, this is now considering our C2, perpendicular C2. Um, our X, Y is gonna go to negative X, Y. And our x squared minus y squared, well, then went to x squared um, minus quantity negative y squared, which is just equal to x squared minus y squared, what we started with. So x, y went to the negative itself, and um, uh, x squared minus y squared, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. x, y went to the negative itself, just with the convention that we've been using. And x squared minus y squared went to itself. So we take the trace of this and indeed we get a zero. As we expect, that's an easy one. Um, very similar sort of business with the um, uh, inversion operation, except we know from that that uh, x goes to negative x and y goes to uh, negative y. Right? And so x, y is going to go to negative x times negative y, which is just equal to x, y. So x, y goes to itself. And then x squared minus y squared is going to go to quantity negative x squared minus negative y squared. Well, that just equals itself. So they both go to the self, we get the identity matrix, and so that's going to be um, a two. S10, S10 three times, that's what we're doing. Um, so S10 three times, I should probably make some space here, but I wanna keep a lot of this text because uh, we're gonna, again, take advantage of some of the previous math that we have used. So, um, because again, you know, there's a lot of work there that we did. So an S10 three times, remember, is equal to a C10 three times followed by a sigma H three times. But a sigma H three times is just equal to sigma H. But um, a sigma H doesn't do anything, right? Because for, for the vectors X and Y. And so we're left with basically asking, um, you know, S. 10 three times is essentially equivalent to um, a C10 three times. And so what is this theta value that we're rotating going to be equal to? Um, the generic formula, right? If we think about a generic formula for this, it's gonna be two cosine two theta. What is the theta value that we're rotating by? Um, before, when we're rotating, uh, if we, well, theta is going to equal 2 pi over 10 for 1 C10. So it's going to be, which is equal to um, pi over 5. So it's going to be 3 pi over 5. So um, theta here, in this case, is equal to uh, 3 pi over 5. So our character, therefore, very quickly, we can figure out um, in this case is just equal to two cosine um, six pi over five, right? And then there's these trigonometric relationships uh, that you know you have to use. Um, and you can find them just by you know plugging them into your 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 calculator. But cosine six pi over five is equal to um, cosine four pi over five. So this ends up being just two cosine uh, four pi over five. So up here we can write two cosine 
4 pi over 5. And then we're going to do the exact same logic. Um, luckily, all this math is paying off. Exact same logic for uh, S10. And S10, um, again, you know, an S10 is just a C10 followed by a sigma H, but the sigma H doesn't do anything for the vectors X and Y. So we don't have to worry about that. And so this is going to end up being, well, what's the rotation we're doing? We're doing a 2 pi over 10 rotation. That's what theta equals, which is equal to pi over 5. And then our formula says it's 2 cosine and 2 theta is our character. So we're going to get 2 cosine, not pi over 5, but 2 pi over 5. And so that one we just use directly because we're in our favorite 2 pi over 5s or our pi over 5s. We're anticipating that this is going to be a, a 0 here. We're just following kind of a pattern that we've seen. Um, and, you know, this previously in a previous video, we showed that this, um, was a little bit difficult to figure out because you have some off axis rotations that you have to think about when you're doing this flip. And so the easiest way to show this, um, without getting into some complicated geometry is just to think about orthogonality. And so just as we figured out that this had to be zero for X, Y, you can do the same thing with gamma one. And basically what's gonna happen is if you do gamma one dot with gamma four, um, you have these, uh, uh, or maybe let's see, an even easier one to see is uh, gamma five gam dotted with gamma two. Let's do that. The reason I'm doing that is because what happens is all these crazy cosine four pi over, over five and two pi over five terms go away. Because look, you got, 2 cosine 4 pi over 5 times 1 times 2, where your other cosine 2 cosine pi over 5 term is times 2 as well, but times a negative 1, so it goes away. And here, 2 cosine 2 pi over 5 times positive 1 times 2, okay? And here you have 2 cosine 2 pi over 5 times negative 1 times 2. So those are going to cancel each other out when you add them together for the dot product. Um, 2 times 1 times 1, but then you got two times negative one times one. Those cancel each other out. Then you have a zero, and all you're left out with here is your dot product overall has to be zero, so this term has to be zero. So it's a quick way of just doing that algebra in our heads there, um, but that works quite nicely. All right, so um, now we, we're, we still have to derive some more. And I guess one thing that we failed to talk about here, we've just been staring at different functions, but you know, what are these values going to be and uh, we actually know they have to be a two, one, and a one. And the reason why we, we know that is we can always apply uh, one of our character table rules, which says the sum of the squares of the dimensionalities has to equal the order of the point group. So uh, one squared plus one squared plus two squared um, plus two squared plus two squared plus two squared plus one squared plus one squared equals, it should equal 20. This is the order of the point group, I believe. The order of point group is the number of symmetry operations, right? How many symmetry operations do we have? We have one plus two plus two, that's five, plus five is 10, plus one plus two plus two plus five, that's 20. And that's two squared plus two squared plus two squared plus two squared, that's four plus four plus four plus four, 16 plus four more ones is 20. And remember these values here have to be integers. Most of the time they're gonna be ones and twos. So. Um, it could be threes or fours, but we only have eight of them because we have eight classes. So the only way for this to work is for to have four ones and four twos. All right, so um, that's another kind of clue just that will help us, you know, puzzle out the rest of this. But now that we figure x, y, and uh, x squared minus y squared, we can actually use the z multiplying by z trick to help us uh, derive another one. And so we can use a cubic function. This is going to be actually the symmetry of an f orbital, x, y, z, and z x squared minus y squared minus z y squared. Z x squared minus z y squared. These are f orbitals. And we know that these are going to transform together, just like we did z times x, y at the beginning of this video. And we got x, z, and y squared. Now I'm doing z times x, y and x squared minus y squared gets you x, y, z, um, and z times the quantity x squared minus y squared, or if we factor that out, z squared, z x squared minus z, y squared. 
And so then it's really easy to, to crank on through this. We've got positive ones here. This is going to be 2 cosine 4 pi over 5. 2 cosine 2 pi over 5. And then we have a negative one here, but it's a zero, so it becomes zero. This becomes a negative two. This becomes a negative two cosine four pi over five. And this becomes a negative two cosine two pi over five. This becomes a zero, right? One and zero. And there it is. <clears throat> and so at this point, um, we're pretty much, we're very close to finishing. Um, and the only thing we have left to do is to figure out gamma seven and gamma eight. And there aren't any really great functions that help us do this. We've all, used all the linear functions. We've used all the quadratic functions, the five D orbitals. You know, we tested Z squared, it didn't help us. Um, it turns out RZ works, a rotation vector. And so we can, we can go through that um, and we can visualize this very similar to what we did in the uh, D4D character table. So um, I'm just gonna spend some time and erase this text and then um, we, can, we can be back and discuss, discuss that. So uh, let's do that in uh, one last uh, round of, of a video.